Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church on this beautiful Lord's Day. A good day, an auspicious day to be in the house of God. And I'm glad that you're here. We appreciate our members and visitors as well. And I hope when you leave Northside here this morning, you can say it's good to have been in the house of the Lord. Now you that are listening out in the radio listening audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. We want to be a blessing. And if you get on your phone out there in the radio listed audience and call a friend, call a shut-in, have them to tune in and get this hour coming up, I do believe we can be a real inspiration to them. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. And you can write in and get this tape today by sending a gift of $3 for the tape. We'd glad to mail it to you. I'd like for you to have it. It can be an inspiration to you there in your home and for shut-ins and various other causes. So you write in and get the cassette tape. And we'll be glad to send you a list of our cassette tape. We have many of them listed here. If you write in and say, Preacher Edward, send me a list of your cassette tape. We get them in the mail to you, and they're $3 each, and of course the gift is used to help pay our radio expense. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603 is the zip code number. Now if you have your Bible today, I want you to turn, will you please, to the book of Acts chapter 8. It's page 1159 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. That's the kind of Bible I use, the kind I've used for many years. I would want to be found dead in the woods with any other kind. The original Schofield Reference Bible, and it's page um, 1159. I'm speaking on the subject, the man that God sent to the desert. We find in the Bible that all of a sudden, God sent a man to the desert, into a dry, hilly country. This man was in a great revival. This man was a great evangelist. This man first was a great deacon. And God said, I have a, a special mission for you. I want you to go into the desert. And we want to find out today why God sent him there. Began reading with verse 26 of Acts chapter 8. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch, a eunuch of great authority, under Candidus, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot reading Isaiah, that is Isaiah, the prophet, then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I understand except some man should guide me? He desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his sharer, so openeth he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet, this of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. As they went on their way, they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said see here's water what does hinder me from being baptized and philip said if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest and he answered and said i believe that jesus christ is the son of god and he commanded the chariot to stand still they went down both into the water both philip and the eunuch and he baptized him and when they were come up out of the water the spirit of the lord caught away philip that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. 
Now that's reading from the book of Acts chapter 8 verses 26 through the remainder of the chapter. Now we have here a man that God is sending down into a desert land, down to Gazar. Gazar is desert. Now this man here, of course, was at one time a deacon. Now I might want to say this, by the way, I had some to write in and say, Preacher Edwards, we followed you through your message, but they cut you off there at the station before you finished. Would the remainder of your messages be on the cassette tape? The answer is yes. If I'm cut off the air before I finish my message, the remainder of the message will be on the cassette tape. So you can write in and get the tape and get what you don't get at the end of, of the service if I'm cut off at the station at 12 o'clock and then maybe have to go another minute or two to get in my line of thought. You can still get it on the cassette tape. I want you to know that. Now we find that this man was very well to be a deacon and he did his job well. And then God called him to be an evangelist. He was an evangelist, a preacher of the gospel. Now if we'll be faithful in our first assignment, God will enlarge our borders. I believe that with all of my heart. He was called from serving tables to be an evangelist. The Bible says in Acts 21 and verse 8 that he was an evangelist. you find that in that scripture. The Bible tells you in Psalms chapter 75, verses 6 and 7, that promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south, but God is the judge. He putteth down one and sitteth up another. Now you need not expect God to give you new talents if you don't use what you have. Every true born-again believer has a talent that you, you have a gift. You have a gift of some kind. God gives you that gift when God saves you. He gives you some kind of gift. Now if you will find out what that gift is and you can, if you want to really know the will of God, you can know the will of God. You can find out that gift and begin to use it. And if you'll use it effectively and faithfully, God will add to you another gift and another gift. And you'll be loaded with gifts that you can do for God. And you need to do that. You need to redeem the time. Take the advantage of every opportunity you have to get the job done for God. Be willing to serve the Lord and serve Him faithfully. I was reading the other day about this mother that sent her little Eric over to a, a camp there. He was in the camp with other boys and the camp instructor wrote a letter back and said, I'm sorry to inform you, mother, but your little Eric is an unruly boy and I'm going to have to discipline the child. I want you to know it. And the mother hurriedly wrote back and she said, Sir, said, uh, said don't uh, discipline uh, my boy Eric. Just slap the boy sitting beside of him and that'll scale little Eric up and he'll be all right. Now you have a lot of people today, you know, they want somebody else to take the responsibility. They're not willing to take the shock or the treatment. Uh, they want somebody else to do that or do the job. You have a lot of people today, uh, uh, beloved, they want to pass the collection plate whenever the piano needs to be moved from one side to the other. We don't want the big job. We want the little job. But there's a job and a deed for everyone to do. And God has one for you. And God wants you to use it. And if you're using it to be faithful and using that deed, that, that uh, gift that God has given you, you're going to be rewarded for it at the end of life's journey. Now this man started out as a deacon serving tables and as much can be said about that. And then God said, I'm going to call Philip to be an evangelist. And then Philip goes down from Jerusalem down to Samaria and he was called to go into a place that the Jews did not want to travel to. Now he was called to do what angels cannot do. Now angels cannot preach the gospel. Angels cannot come down here and witness. Now someone said if you would open up heaven and say to all the angels up there, I want, I'm going to send you back to the earth and let you go down and win souls and witness and tell the things of God. In a matter of a few minutes, every angel in heaven would be down here trying to serve God. Someone has said if you would open up the gates of hell and let those inmates in hell out and tell them to come back to the earth and evangelize, they'd cover this earth going from house to house begging people to get saved, to get right with God. Now angels can't carry the gospel. The inmates in hell can't carry the gospel, but we can. 
And the angel could only tell Philip what to do. Now we need to do what God tells us to do. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 26, the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, said, Arise, go toward the south under the way that which goeth down from Jerusalem and the gaze of which is desert. Now here we find this man, this man Philip, a great evangelist. He had been serving tables and witnessing in Jerusalem. He had gone down to the crossroads, the cross bridge, that Samaria. And now he was winning these people to God. The Bible said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Samaria and so forth. So now he's going down to Samaria. He's winning these half-breeds to God. They were half Assyrian and half a Jew. And the Jews had no dealings with them because of the mixed breed. That even established their own temple of worship down there in Samaria. And for years, they have nothing to do with each other. They hated each other and despised one another. And yet we find that this man, Philip the Evangelist, under the leadership of God Almighty, goes down to Samaria and begins to preach. And God begins to save. And he's performing miracles and getting the job done for God. And revival breaks out. And people are, are joyful. They're gleeful. They're having a wonderful time. And then we find that Simon Peter and John and others went down there to join the group. And they are having a wonderful revival in Samaria. Oh, because of this man going down, spearheading the way, going to a place where no other Jew wanted to go, and there did the job for God. Then we find, number three, that he leaves a mighty good thing to go into a place least expected. Now, everybody likes to be around a revival. When a good meeting is going on, we like to stay there. When the singing's good, the spirit is good, the preaching is good, and everything is wonderful, we just like to stay there. Now, they were having that uh, type of services there in, in Samaria. They were preaching, winning souls to God, rejoicing, everybody happy for the miracles. And uh, this man, Philip, this evangelist, that had come down and spearheaded the way, well, he was as happy as he could be. He was rejoicing. He was praising God. And all of a sudden, there came... An angel sent from God. And this angel said, uh, Philip, he said, yes, sir. God said for you to go across beyond Jerusalem, down to Gaza, into a desert land. That's where God wants you to go. No doubt Philip said, uh, me go to the desert. Well, there's no people down there in that desert. We have people here, multitudes, people getting saved, revivals broken out. And we're having a good time and and you mean for me to leave here and go into the desert? The angel said, yes, that's exactly what God said for you to do. You go where God wants you to go. And Philip said, yes, sir. If that's what God wants, I'll leave the Samaria. I'll go down into the desert and see what God wants for me down there. And this man, Philip, gets ready and he takes off across the land by Jerusalem on down into the desert, into a desert country where you could see no people occasionally. You'd see caravans come by or shepherd out in the field. And there he was doing what God told him to do. He obeyed the Lord. He was there in the desert. And no doubt he says, I wonder what in the world does God want me here for? I reminded the dear man that obeyed God. He said, God, I'll do what you want me to do. I'll preach what you want me to preach. I'll go where you want me to go if you'll just let me know where you want me to go. One day God said to this man, he said, I want you to go over to the old sawmill camp. There's some loggers over there and lumberjacks over there at work. And I want you to go over there and preach. The young preacher said, Lord, I'll go. He grabbed his Bible. He headed off to the old camp, the log camp. And when he arrived on the scene, there was not one lumberjack, not one individual there. The place was completely empty. He looked all around, he saw nobody, and he said, why in the world did God send me here, and he sent me here to preach? No doubt he said, this is most foolish for me to come here and preach, and there's not a soul here. But he said, I'm going to do what God sent me here to do. He went into the little place they had erected for the mess hall where they ate the food. He fixed him up a little pulpit stand. He took out his Bible, and he read his text, and he prayed, and he started preaching like folk at lightning. And preaching and singing and preaching and preaching. But something had happened. When the old lumberjacks had left the camp, they traveled 
quite a way, and they discovered they left their best saw back at the camp. They said to one of the young boys, about 18 years old, son, go back and pick up that saw. You know where it is. And hurry back and get that saw and bring it here as quickly as you can. He said, yes, sir. And the little fellow took off, and the closer he came to the lumber camp, he thought he heard some noise. The closer he came, he heard some preaching. He heard some singing. He said, what in the world's going on? And he came there to the old log slab mess hall, sat down on the outside and peeped in, and he saw a young preacher in there preaching like he had a house full of people, and there wasn't a soul in there. That preacher preached the message God gave him. He preached hell, fire, and damnation, the grace of God. That poor old lumberjack sitting out there began to cry. He got under conviction. He couldn't stand any longer. He picked that saw up and started off. And on the way back to the camp, he got out on his knees. And he got saved. God saved him. He went back and told the fellows that God had saved him. Said this some old fellow there preaching. Didn't know who he was. And the preacher didn't know he even came around. Didn't know I was there. But man, God got a hold to me. And he said, from here on in, fellas, I'm going to live for God. Many years later, the same preacher that did the preaching made a tour of the missionary field in Africa. And he met many of the young missionaries to speak to them. And he spoke there in the missionary camp at the close of the service. That came up a young man and, and shook his hand and said, my name's so-and-so. He said, let me ask you a question. He said, all right, son. He said, uh, Preacher, were you ever at an old lumber camp back in the States many years ago? I told about the time. And you were in the kitchen there preaching. And there was a living soul there to hear you. The preacher grinned. He said, yes, I was. I've always wondered why God told me to do that. But I had to obey God. He said, sir, let me shake your hand. Let me hug your neck. I was there. He told him the story. I was sitting on the outside. I heard the message. God save me. I entered into school and got my training and said, God sent me here to the mission field and I'm just as happy as I can be. And I'm so glad that you obeyed God that day. Now, dear people, you must do what God wants you to do. It might not make sense to some. Some may think you're crazy, but you do what God wants you to do and you'll find out it'll work. And so he obeyed God. He went back. In verse 27, he went back to obey God. And he did. And then whenever uh, he obeyed God, things happened. Now we find this man, Philip. He takes off down into the desert. And lo and behold, he sees a caravan coming down from Jerusalem. That was a eunuch from Ethiopia. That was the treasure of Cantus, the queen of Ethiopia, and in charge of all of her wealth and so forth. But he was either Jewish or a Jewish proselyte. And he had gone up to Jerusalem for the Passover and, and no doubt stayed for the Pentecost. But he didn't know what it was all about. It was just a religious system to him. But he went up every year for this occasion. And he was coming back from Jerusalem. And he had heard him talking about Jesus up there. And he would heard him talking about the crucifixion, the resurrection. And he heard him talk about the Holy Spirit coming on the day of Pentecost. And he would gotten a hold of the portion of Scripture. And he had that in his hands. And so he was coming along down the dusty road. And the Spirit of God spake unto Philip. In verse 29, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Now the Holy Ghost is able to send you to the place where he wants to go, the exact spot. Go and join yourself to this chariot. There's other chariots there, but he said, I want you in this chariot. Now this man was under conviction. This man God was working on. And then Philip obeyed the Lord and joined the very chariot that God told him to join. Now you go to the very place, serve God at the very place where God wants you to serve Him, and you'll be happy and God will use you, and you can accomplish much. So we join this chariot. Now if you notice here, God works on both ends of the line. Here we have this Ethiopian unit coming down from Jerusalem, sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah chapter 53, and he can't understand it. He had heard some things up there in Jerusalem. He didn't quite understand. He wanted to know more about it. He'd like to be saved. He'd like to know God. And so God knew that man wanted to be saved. That's why he sent that evangelist from Samaria back to the desert, down to Gazar. And so he's under conviction. God is moving. I had a very strange experience many years ago. Some of you have heard about it. Many years ago, I was called to go to a meeting down in Moultrie, Georgia. We had a good meeting down there. And 
South Georgia, gracious pastor, fine church. And the pastor said to me, he said, Brother Edwards, we are having supper tonight with a man that they call in the First World War shell shock. We don't call it shell shock now, but you know what I mean. I says, I know what you mean. He said he went through the war and almost got killed and he's in bad shape and said every time we try to win him to God, he begins to tell us about how he fought over there and had to fight the enemy and uh, things of that type. And he felt like God wouldn't save him. He said, God's not going to save me. I, I did some things uh, in, in combat that God's not going to save me. And he said he's in ill health and he's beginning to drink. He's somewhat of a, a drunkard. And Preach Edwards, his wife is so burdened for him. And I, I believe maybe if we'll just pray and uh, maybe God will use you to speak to the man. I said, yes, sir. I'll do it. We went over, went in this home. That's sort of man. And a man about my age, and uh, he had lost a lot of weight because of drinking and nervous and his condition he was in. And we sit down, and, and the pastor just kind of slipped out in the yard, and the wives are in the kitchen fixing supper and left me alone with this fellow. I began to talk with him about salvation. He said, uh, oh, he said, I can't get saved. You know, I was over yonder in Germany in World War II, and I done this. I said, wait just a minute, sir. I said, I was over there in Germany too, and I done this and this and this, and God saved me, and I'm preaching the gospel. He looked at me kind of funny. He said, well, I'll tell you, preacher. He said, I was in the uh, Seventh Army over there in southern France, and we pushed through uh, uh, southern France on up into Alsace-Lorraine, France, and on through uh, uh, Germany and into Austria. I said, yes, yes, I know that. I was in the Seventh Army myself. Well, he said, preacher, I was in the um, 147th, a, a, a regiment. I said, sir, that was a regiment I was in. I was in the 147th Regiment. Oh, he said, you, you, you were in the 36th Division? I said, yes, I was in the 36th Division, the old Texas t Pats uh, Division. Yes, I was in the 36th Division. He said, that's strange. He said, uh, uh, preacher, he said, you know, I was in um, uh, the 3rd Battalion. I said, yes, I was in the 3rd Battalion myself. Oh, he said, now that is kind of strange. He said, uh, I don't remember seeing you we said, I was in the 3rd Battalion. I said, yes, I was in the 3rd Battalion. He said, uh, uh, Preacher Edwards, um, I was in uh, Company J. I said, yes, sir, I was in Company I. My company, Joe and your company. We fought side by side. He said, you mean to tell me, Preacher, that uh, you over there and we fought together and made some of the same attacks together? I said, yes, sir, that's exactly right. And you're saved and you're preaching? I said, yes. He shook his head. He said, you know, I almost got killed in Bishwala. And I was after in France. I said, sir, I almost got killed in Bishwala too. I said, the company officer, while we was in, a, in the basement, and there's a man shot out there on the outside, and the lieutenant knew the man was dead without a doubt. And the captain said to me, he said, Edwards, go out there and get that man and bring him on the inside. And the lieutenant, I don't know who he was. I always thank God for him. He's the hand of God. The lieutenant said, Captain, sir, the man's, I'm sure, is dead. And said, if you send this soldier out there, you're going to have another dead soldier out there. They'll kill him just like they kill him. Captain said, well, you might have something, lieutenant. Just let it be. Now, God, the, the devil tried to kill me. I said, I, I came close many times to getting killed. And God preserved me. He said, man, he said, I like to get killed. I said, I like to get killed. And uh, he said, now, you're saved and you're a preacher. I said, yes, God called me to preach even before I went in the army. He said, then God would save me. I said, sure, God will save you, man. And that man began to cry. And we got on our knees and I led that man to God. See, God is working on him, working on me. I was probably the only person could ever warn him because I'd been where he had been. And he'd been using that excuse. And I'd been through the same thing. And God saved me and I was preaching the gospel. That man got saved, began to weep. The whole family started shouting and praising God. The church got happy that night. And just a few weeks later, I received a letter from the pastor. And the letter said, Brother Edwards, I'm sorry to tell you, the good brother that you won to God went on to be with the Lord the other day and we laid his body down in the grave as the sun went down. I said, thank God I had a chance to win him to God. See, God works on the other end, the line. When you begin to deal with people and God knows where he wants you, God can work on the other end. And that's what he did. And so he goes up and he finds that this man can't understand the Bible. In verses 30 and 31, Philip ran through to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understand thou what thou readest? And he said, Here am I, 
Or how can I accept some man guide me? See, the natural man don't understand this book. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 tells you, The natural man understandeth not the things of God. He receiveth them not, neither can he understand them. They're foolish to him, because they're spiritually discerned. Now, a lot of unsaved people try to learn enough Bible to argue, but that don't mean to know anything about it. They can't write divided. They don't know the spiritual side of it. And so the, he couldn't understand it. He said, Preacher, I can't understand it. The old bachelor said, The natural man can't understand the word of God, sir. Let me help you here. And he got up in the chat with him. And there the old man, the Ethiopian eunuch, he was a black man from Ethiopia. And he was reading from Isaiah. And then we find the Bible said in verse 35, And Philip opened his mouth and began to, at the same scripture, and preach unto him Jesus. Didn't say he preached unto him our great Baptist heritage, our wonderful program, our great denomination. He preached unto him Jesus. The Bible says we need to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. And when he preached unto him Jesus, then the man listened. And he explained that that scripture meant Jesus. That was scripture pertaining to the first coming of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 53. He explained that to him and he listened. And then um, after he believed that Jesus Christ was the son of God and found out he's talking about the first coming of Christ. He said, man, uh, here's some water. What does hinder me from being baptized? Verse 37, Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Now, Philip wanted to be sure that this man was saved before they baptized him. He wanted to be baptized. And so the Bible said then they came to this pond of water and they stopped at the water. And there they got out and the Bible said they went down into the water. He was baptized. Verse 38. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both of them in the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. The word of God said they went down into the water and they came up out of the water. Now, if you got religion in your head, about all you need to do is just get somebody to pour a little water on top of it. If you got religion in spots, then sprinkling to do. If you got religion in your heart, the whole body is to go under. And so he had religion in his heart, as I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he baptized him. And the only scripture way to baptize is immersion. And if you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart, you don't need to be immersed. If you have Jesus Christ, if you believe in your heart and you know him, you need to be immersed. As I said, if you've got just a little dab of religion on top of your head, just get some old apostate to pour a little water on your head. Do just as much good. If you've got a little religion around in spots, just get somebody to sprinkle a little water on you and that'll be all right. That'll do you just as good because you're not saved anyway. But if you got it in your heart, you got it in your soul. Put the whole man under. Put the whole body under. That's what God says do in the mode of baptism. Put him under. Baptize him in that manner. And so here he baptized him. You have about three things that they're born outright in water. You have a tab toll, a muskeet, and a camelite. They're all born outright in water. But God's people believe in water baptism. But beloved, we believe in being baptized after we're saved. And they both went on their way. Rejoicing, a new convert, verse 39, and he went on his way rejoicing, and Philip went on his way preaching. Now, whenever they got through with that business, the man was baptized, they brought him back up into the chariot, and then he went on his way praising God. Now, if that poor fellow had preached religion, he had been in bad shape because the Holy Ghost told this man, uh, Philip, he said, I got about 35 miles journey for you, so you start moving toward Azotus. I want you to preach over there and go on over. Keep on preaching these little towns. You get to your home in Caesarea. And so if he'd had preacher religion, then man, he'd have been in bad shape when that preacher, the Spirit led him in another way. But he had salvation in his heart. And tradition tells us that he went back to Ethiopia among those black people and there began to do mission work and began to organize churches in that area and God mightily used this man. Now, beloved, the point I want you to see today is this. God may send you to the place least expected. God will send you where he wants you. 
God will want you to be your best where he places you. And you're to find God's place where he wants you. If God wants you here at Northside to help us do the job here together, then you need to be here. If God wants you elsewhere, then you need to be elsewhere. You need to be where God wants you and God will lead you and show you where he wants you. And if you're here this morning unsaved, you need to get saved. If you're here backslidden, you need to come back to God. If you're here and you want to join this church, by letter, by statement, as a candidate for baptism, you may come and we accept in a way we receive members. And I feel like there's somebody here this morning needs to respond to this invitation. Philip went down to the desert. That God had a job for him to do. If God sends you to the desert, if God sends you to some place that you don't want to go, if God sends you some other place to do something for him, just say, God, give me grace. You know what you're doing, and I'm not going to argue about it, and I'll do what you want me to do, and that you should do. God bless you. You've listened well. Let's stand to our feet. Dear Heavenly Father, I've delivered the message you laid on my heart. We find that this man obeyed you and went to the desert. You sent him there. There's a reason for it. Now, God, there's a reason for whoever you send us to serve thee. There's a reason for it. And help thy children to know that each one has a gift and to find the place to use that gift and use it to the glory of God. Speak to any backslider or unsaved person. Speak to the entire radio listen audience, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Now, Debbie's going to play for us as she plays a couple of stanzas. Now listen to me closely. If you're in this building, and you're not saved. You need to come down here and get right with God. People are dying every day. I was thinking about that machine turned over on this boy over here past week, killed him. Those people jerked out of that plane. Those people killed in that bombing in Berlin. People killed on highways, wrecks, heart attacks, strokes. People growing older, closer to the grave than ever before. If you are not saved, you need to come down here and let God save you right now. Would you do it? Backslider, sinner, come on, let God save you today. You won't find a better time. Come on, we'll help you. I'll take over and help you. God bless you. Come right ahead. Amen. That's fine. Amen. You like that? He's doing for you. You believe in all your heart. Amen.